Hey everyone, thanks for watching. In this video, it's the second and final part in the Barbecue Island series build. In this video, um, we complete the concrete countertop pour, removing the edge forms, skinning it with faux stone, uh, applying all of the cabinets and drawers, uh, popping in the barbecue, and the refrigerator and the lights. So I used uh, a, a product from Concrete Countertop Solutions. They offer this really cool product where you buy these plastic breakaway edge form molds that create just an absolute perfect edge where it's almost shiny because of the concrete settles so well with no bubbles. Really good product. Um, it's got different variations of, of edges, straight, curved, rounded. You can always take a look. I think I, oh, I've got the description link in the video. Two of my corners did produce a crack. I'm not sure why, uh, but I ended up using some super glue and then sanded it down and it looked pretty good afterwards. Spent the next couple of days uh, sanding the top um, and some of the edges. I started off, I think, with 80 grit, and then I moved on to 220. And some spots I finished off with 300 grit. Um, and then I turned to an orbital, orbital sander as well to get really like some of the really uneven spots off. But the pour turned out pretty well. The color was fairly even. I didn't dye the color at all; just straight. Um, sand topper plus the concrete mix i did use the uh, concrete solutions countertop additive so it's a i think it's like a fiberglass reinforced additive that really helps it stay liquidy and gets into all the holes Next step was to use uh, a concrete sealer. So I picked up some, uh, like a Bear product, B-E-H-R from the big box store where it's a sealer um, and almost a little bit of a shine in one. So make sure you clean off the surface really well with a wet towel before you do this process because anything that gets stuck under the sealer is kind of semi-permanent. So no bugs, dusts, uh, anything like that. A little wet towel, it'll dry pretty quick after that. <clears throat> and then you put it on with a roller. I did three coats over two different days. Here I'm starting to drill some of the access holes to run the LED lighting. <clears throat> um, I picked up a unit from Amazon, I'll have the link in the description below. It's just kind of a, a smart home controlled LED underlighting. And here I'm putting in a GFI breaker um, on the uh, beam shelf. There's this pretty cool product that you can get on Amazon that's fairly common. It's a, this little aluminum C-channel that you can screw to the underside of the concrete deck board 
And then once you've got the LEDs stuck to the inside of the C channel, you slide on this white um, cover, which kind of diffuses a little bit the lighting so you don't see the individual bulbs. I ended up having about, I don't know, three or four feet of extra LED lighting. Um, so I was able to actually run it on the inside of the barbecue, right underneath the barbecue itself. So when it's on and I open up the access panels, I can actually see inside the island if I need to do any work inside there. Here I'm installing two um, air vents on the front of the barbecue island wall just to give the, the inside of the barbecue a little bit of uh, air ventilation. I've got my lined up cabinets and drawers ready to go. Um, all the cutouts are already pre-measured. Here I'm installing a little bit of uh, con construction adhesive for the cutting board drawer because I didn't have any real way to use screws to secure that one, so I used um, some adhesive. For the rest, I was able to get inside and put some screws into the frame for them to hold them still. For one of the drawers, I actually needed to drill some uh, access holes through, and stainless steel is hard to drill through. You can't even use normal bits, so I had to pick up some uh, carbide steel tip bits with some WD-40 to get a hole drilled through them so I can get a screw in through the frame of the barbecue island. So, and I think I broke three bits trying to drill the hole into the stainless steel cabinet. Now it's time to skin the whole island with some what we call faux stone. It's, it just looks like stack stone, but it's actually made out of concrete. Pretty decent stuff to work with. Um, I borrowed a, a wet tile saw from a friend that does make pretty quick work of these concrete slash faux stone tiles. Um, I think I was quoted from a contractor about ten thousand dollars to build this and i'm into it i think total i was into it for about forty five hundred dollars for cost if you do end up doing this i recommend a two-person job for doing the stone reason is when you're doing mortar and you're buttering the backs of the stone, your hands get covered in mortar. And then you touch the front of the stone since you're actually having to push it on. And then that mortar dries and it's a pain to scratch off. So it's good to have one person be the mortar person and then another person with clean hands to push the stone against the wall. Here, I've got my son helping me out. At the very top of the island, I actually had about a one inch piece left to put in the top and so I actually bought an industrial strength pastry bag to pipe in a little bead of mortar at the top to put in the last inch of the stone the very top underside the counter 
I put some wood edging right in front of the barbecue since some of the concrete countertop was exposed on the side. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because in the next video I'm going to be taking an old high school gym locker and transforming it into some of the coolest outdoor backyard storage you've ever seen.